On today's video, we're gonna take a tour of a house I built actually four years ago. And if you've been on my channel for a long time, you remember this as the perfect wall house. But if you're new to my channel, let me tell you what's so different and so special about this house. Well, first of all, when you look at the outside, very iconic shape, you know, not built traditionally with overhangs. It kind of looks like a big Monopoly piece. It's all wrapped in metal and we've got some really cool awnings, kind of a modern farmhouse style. Uh, big kudos to the architect, uh, Rouser design on this house. But as you go inside, the house looks especially different and especially striking. The first thing you're gonna notice when you first walk in the door on this house is that there's no insulation. You've got these bare studs showing and this beautiful shiplap. Now Chip and Joanna may have popularized this, but this house was built long before they were popular. What you're seeing here is actually the studs. This is the framing, the structure on the house. We've got no drywall and we've got no insulation. How does this meet code? How did I build this four years ago? What we've got here is no inside insulation, meaning insulation in between the studs. Instead, we've got outsulation. This house has a thick blanket of rigid insulation all the way around the house and a thick blanket of it on the roof. This was a concept first designed by this guy named Joe Stebrick. He's a building science guy out of Boston, super smart guy. And we kind of took it to an interesting level by not using any inside insulation or drywall. But the concept is frame the house. All the framing now is within the thermal envelope, the air conditioned envelope. And then outside of the framing, we did our peel and stick weather barrier on the whole outside of the house. And then we put a thick blanket of outsulation. A good analogy I've heard Joe talk about before is if you wanted to insulate, would you put the insulation between your ribs or would you put on a big parka? This house has a big parka, a big thick blanket of insulation all around it. So now on the inside, we don't need any insulation. Now, if you've ever used a FLIR camera, these tell a very interesting story. When you look at a typical house with a FLIR camera and you point that at the studs, you see each individual studs through the sheetrock because what's happening is the insulation is blocking the heat from coming through, but each individual stud is what they call a thermal bridge. It's a pathway for the heat inside the house from the inside to the outside. Studs have very low R value compared to insulation. But as I look at this house, look, I can see through the doors and there's yellow there. We've got a lot of heat coming through the windows and doors, but then pan over to the walls absolutely nothing. Those walls are the exact same temperature as the inside of the house. My FLIR camera is showing it's 75 degrees on those walls. And if we pan around here, the same exact thing. Oh, what's that? Oh, looks like we got a problem in our envelope. What is that? We've got some, we've got some heat over here. Ah, we got a little closer. It's a speaker. Apparently that speaker has some phantom power running to it. And that speaker is 82 degrees. But look at those walls, nothing absolutely quiet. There is no heat signature there whatsoever. Let's turn around and move the FLIR over this way and see if we can find anything that's cold. Now we heated and cooled the house with just a very small HVAC system. In fact, I just have three mini split heads in the house. And look at that right there. What you're seeing there is the cold air, 55 degrees or so, coming out of that Mitsubishi mini split head. And because this house is so efficient, I can heat and cool the house with just three of those throughout the whole house. Very interesting. Now, if you're not familiar with this house, go back and check out all my under construction videos. I've got a bunch of videos from this house from several years ago. But on today's video, what I wanna do is revisit this house and talk about what I would do differently. How's the house lasted over the last four or five years? We've changed owners. My original owner I built this for has moved. I've got a new owner moving in. And so I've got this unique ability to go through a house that I built many years ago, four or five years ago, and see how it's lasted, see how it's done. So first off on the outside, let's actually pop over to the porch right here. You know, we've got a full metal skin, as you saw earlier on the house. The house is in excellent shape on the outside. It really needs a power washing. If you look at the metal siding here, we're dirty. Uh, you know, we could scrape off some dirt from this. So we need a power washing probably on the outside. But other than that, beautiful. You know, this metal's fared perfectly. There's no repainting that needs done. There's nothing that looks faded. We might need to repaint these doors in a couple years, but they're under a good overhang, so those are in good shape. 
Speaking of these overhangs, I've got a Galvalume metal roof up there. That looks awesome. And we used bare steel that we used the phosphoric acid coating on. Uh, and you know what? These look fantastic. You know, there's really no visible rust except maybe at the bottom where some water is pooled. I think we can go at least another five or maybe even 10 years before we're gonna need to touch anything on that raw steel outside. The cedar deck, we use cedar out here, untreated cedar, never did anything to it. As you get into the shade, it still looks, you know, a little darker, but beautiful. Out here, it's weathered a little bit. You know, the cedar that's getting direct sunlight and UV rays, we're starting to see a raised grain. But I'm a big fan of using exposed fasteners, so I've got some stainless steel fasteners. Another couple years, if this homeowner wants to replace the edge deck boards and refresh these, uh, we could easily do that. We could also come in and sand these and refresh that. So the exterior in this house looks amazing. Let's go in the inside and see what we can see on the inside. Now I mentioned that we've got a change of owner and when we first built the house, uh, let me give you a quick tour. When you walked in this front door right here, this is actually kind of a side door. The first room you come to is a multi-purpose room. This is a bedroom uh, slash home office space. We've got a mini split head in here. We've got a fan to move the air. I love the shelf design that Architect came up with. Uh, and then you also notice we've got louvered doors throughout the whole house. We've got a lot of airflow um, through the rooms in this house. And we did that on purpose so that a mini split head in here would also supply cooling to other parts of the house. The one downside of a house like this with no sheetrock and no inside insulation is that it's hard to uh, imagine a larger family being in a house like this. You're gonna definitely hear what's going on in the house. You know, we've got a first floor powder bath here and we've got a louvered door. So whatever's happening in the bathroom, you're gonna hear. I also love how the architect designed super simple finishes that have really lasted and looked good. I'm, I'm not sure how much use the shower has gotten over the years, but it looks like the day we installed it, it's perfect. What's also interesting is it looks like you've got wood coming in here on the jam to the shower. I don't know if you can see that. But in fact, it looks like the shiplap, which is a pine shiplap. But in fact, this is a PVC jam material. This is Azek or one of those other uh, plastic type materials so that it could come right into the shower space. We wouldn't have to worry about repainting it or doing anything to it. These pipe fixtures the architect designed uh, for towel holders and also for uh, vanity tops, if you look right here, these have worked out fantastic. And in fact, these are actually just parts uh, from our local Lowe's that he put together and we did a really simple plywood with the top on there. These look amazing. One of the questions I got often about this house is, how do you run electrical and plumbing? Well, let's take a look at that real quick. Electrical is all at the baseboard level. So we, we've got a crawl space underneath us here. We ran all the electrical up through the crawl space so we could actually put a horizontal mount metal box right down to the base here. And then the plumbing is actually exposed. This is the drain line from the upstairs bathroom that I'll show you in a minute. The plumbers did an amazing job of kind of tucking it in out of the way. We painted it to match the studs so that you wouldn't see it, but you've got a little bit of exposed electrical if you look around here. And then you'll also see a little bit of electrical conduit in a few places. Uh, you know, for instance, in the ceiling here where we've got this track lighting, there's some electrical conduit visible in just a few places, but not very much. Now, what are some benefits of this style of construction? Boy, think about this kitchen. I've said this before, that if we wanted to remodel this kitchen, think about how easy it would be with no insulation, no sheetrock to deal with. We've got a wall-to-wall -wall kitchen here. In fact, this is just an inexpensive Ikea kitchen. We built this originally for my client who's very tall, quite a bit taller than me. And look how tall this is. I don't know what this total height is. I don't have a tape on me, but I bet it's 42 inches or so. Most kitchen countertops are somewhere between 36 and maybe 38 on the high end. So this is a very tall kitchen. And look at those pedestals, how tall they are. Now my new owners, they're a little more normal height. And so we're gonna actually come in and I bet it's gonna take us one to two days. We'll pull all the cabinets. We'll drop everything down to a more normal height. All we'll have to do is unscrew this plug mold and drop it, unscrew these um, shelves that we custom built and drop those, and boom, the kitchen will be remodeled for my new owner, be totally customized. We could even rip all this out and replace it all. And I, again, it would be like a two or three day job, super easy when we don't have drywall to deal with. Another thing we're gonna be doing on this house, my new owner wants to add 
an additional uh, mini split head to the upstairs where we don't have one currently. And so here's a little behind the scenes look. It's kind of my laundry mechanical area in the house. We've got a laundry room here around the corner. I don't know if you can peek back there, but there's a dehumidifier back there. And I love how as you're peeking around the corner, you can also see our PEX piping so that you can get access to the uh, master shower valve right there. Super cool that that's all totally exposed. Super easy if you ever had a problem to fix it. And then inside this closet here, which is a pantry closet, we're gonna be uh, running a new Freon line upstairs. And again, because this is all exposed and easy to get to, oh, I forgot, it's got a door switch, uh, a jam switch rather. It's gonna be super easy to get there. Last thing I wanna mention, I've got a Panasonic ERV that we installed four years ago. I checked it uh, earlier today and our homeowner's done a great job of pulling the um, filters out about every 60 days and cleaning those and this ERV is still going strong. That's such a great buy at like 200 bucks or so. And then I've got an air share fan here which is actually taking air from the hottest part of the house and moving it down here to the laundry room. Uh, let's go upstairs and I'll show you a couple things up there too. Okay, so let's walk, now that we're upstairs, there's really just two rooms up here. And let's go check out the master first. So master bedroom in the house. Again, I love that all the framing is exposed. And now you can see the roof framing. Check out these roof rafters. We've got two by eight rafters here. Again, with that ship lap. And on the outside of that is plywood, or pardon me, OSB, and then peel and stick. And then again, insulation. I've got six inches of insulation on the roof deck. Four, in four inches of insulation on the outside walls. And this master is so cool up here, isn't it? I love it. One mini split head, one fan. And what's, uh, what else is interesting about here is that you've got these shoulder areas. Remember how that roof line comes down and meets the walls? But yet we've got this area here that runs about, I don't know, six, seven feet right here. Come around here and we'll show you what's back here. This is the shoulder area of the house which allows us to run all of our services. So check this out, pop in back here. Look how awesome this is. It feels like we're in a 1920s house that grandma lived in and never got insulated. But you know what's different about this? In grandma's house, at some point, they insulated back here. There's also typically some rat droppings and all kinds of spiders and bugs and all that kind of stuff. None of that is visible in here. This is a four-year-old house I had an original owner that uh, lived in here and uh, just recently moved out. And look how clean and great it is in here. And I don't think they spend any particular time trying to make it that way. This is just really what it looked like after construction. So think about this. Here's the outside walls. This is my double top plate. These are my roof rafters right here coming down and sitting right on top of that. This is your standard uh, bird block in between there. So as my outside walls come up, I've got the peel and stick, and because there's no overhang here, these roof rafters are cut off right at the wall, I can run my walls straight into my roof with the peel and stick on the outside. And what that means is all this area here, there's zero airflow. There's zero ability for bugs to get through or pollen or dust or any of that kind of stuff. So look how clean it is in these stud bays. We've got just a little bit of dust in there, but that's it. So this is a four-year-old house. I'd be willing to bet not once has a shop vac or a, uh, uh, or a vacuum been in here, except for when we finish construction. And there's very little dust in this house. So different than a standard built house that has inside insulation. No rat droppings, no vermin, no pests, none of that. What a cool house. Now let me show you the next one that I think is really gonna connect with you on this style of construction. Come back this way. Now at the opposite end of this hallway is the master bath. And again, remember that shoulder wall. Now we're in a bump out here. This is a dormer, but come on back here. Master bath. Now we didn't originally put a mini split head in this master bath. We just have that air share fan that I mentioned downstairs. So that is actually uh, taking in air, sucking air in. I've got a Panasonic inline fan, and then it's dumping it downstairs. We're really just trying to cycle that air from the hottest part of the house. My new owner doesn't uh, want the bathroom to be any hotter than the rest of the house, 
and wants to have it nice and cool in here. So we're going to add a mini split head. But think about how easy that is to add in a house like this compared to a standard house. One more uh, shoulder area discussion here. Because we've got access to all these areas, there's really nothing that's hidden in the house behind sheetrock. Everything's totally possible. So here's, here's a quick for instance. My homeowner, shortly after uh, my original owner moved in, he said, gosh, this tub is too small for me. I want a bigger tub and I want to add a jetted tub. Because everything's fully accessible right here, the plumbing, the jet motors, the electrical, all the drains, Think about how easy that was. I got my plumber over here and in one day we pulled and replaced this tub. I think I had to make maybe one wood plug where I had a hole in the wall and I brought the painter in for just a super tiny amount of touch up. Done. Why aren't more people building this? This perfect wall concept is amazing. And we're adding a mini split head. Again, I won't have any drywall, nothing. I'll just have to pull off maybe one sheetrock or pardon me, one shiplap board and that's it. Such a cool house. All right, guys. Well, what would I do differently then? Would I, would I change the way we built the house? No, I don't think I would. However, if I was going to build this for a family, you know, if I was building this for my big crew, let's say, what would I do differently? It's a loud house. You know, you can definitely hear things. When you look at this subfloor here, this is the underside of what you're seeing downstairs. There's nothing separating this level from the downstairs except for this. This is commonly referred to as car deck. This is two by six. It's tongue and groove. Um, you can see that it's shrunk a little bit over the years. And so we've got some wider gaps here. I think I might have refined a few finishes. Um, I don't love the, the fact that these have shrunk. So I might go to like a hardwood floor in this house. I also might actually hang some drywall in a few key places. Uh, like the master bedroom, let's say, or another area that I was wanting to soundproof a little bit more so that you could isolate the house. But I sure wouldn't hang sheetrock in those places. You know, having access to those shoulder areas, being able to change things, to access electrical and plumbing and HVAC and all those systems, that's incredible. And the fact that we're adding a mini split head here, you know, it should be a one or two day job. It's going to be super easy. So a house like this is incredibly upgradable. I think that this house will last a long time. I mean, think about these studs and this wood. This wood is being kept in the same conditions as the baby grand piano in your house. How long will a baby grand piano, if it's in the middle of your living room, last? <laughs> a long time, a few generations. How long will this wood last if all this wood has a thick blanket of insulation on the outside of it? and it's exposed to the same temperature and humidity year after year after year. I think a pretty long time. Guys, check out links in the description. I've got a bunch of, new, of, a bunch of old videos about this house. I also put some links on the concept from Joe Stebrick and Building Science Corporation, so you can kind of see the research behind this. But there's not a whole lot I'd do differently except for maybe some of the soundproofing on this house. Incredible house is gonna last a long, long time and be super efficient in the meantime. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber to my videos. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. See you next time.